The use of XR for ArcVis and digital twins is becoming increasingly prevalent as the technologies improve and devices get cheaper. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up your MetaQuest headsets for Unreal Engine 5 for your architectural experiences and apps. I'll be doing more videos with VR and architecture and cities. And this one is just to get the basic setup. The workflow is similar for the latest range of MetaQuest headsets, including 2, 3 and Pro. There are quite a few steps involved the first time we jump into VR development, so I will show you how to install the required software and develop with these headsets. First, you need the Oculus Quest app. If you go to meta.com, at the setup page, you can find all the install files. All we need to work with Unreal Engine is a desktop app, which you can find here under AirLink and Link Cable. It works for all the headsets, even if it says Quest 2, so download and run this. You will see other links for the mobile apps, which are useful as they have features such as repairing your controllers and linking them again if they go out of sync, although they're not completely necessary if you have the desktop app. Just follow the install instructions, and of course you need to have a Meta account, so log in with these details or make an account. And once installed, open up the Oculus app, and you can go to Devices on the left sidebar, and click Add Headset. Then you will see a range of headsets which you want to install and pair with. I've only tested it with the Quest 2, 3 and Pro, but the other versions are rather outdated anyway. And to let you know, I'm using the Quest Pro. This is currently my go-to headset, mainly because it is the only headset that uses eye tracking for Meta. And you can create some interesting apps with that. You would then have a choice to use a cable link or wireless link. I will first use the air link. So you need to turn on your headset. And in the headset, click on quick settings on the bottom bar here. Go to the top right settings gear icon. Enter system, quest link, and toggle on the quest link. You can then launch this. And you have to make sure you toggle on the air link option at the top. So that you can go wireless. But once it finds your PC, select it and press pair. You just need to confirm that the pairing code on your PC is the same as on the headset. And then it is paired. By the way, if you're having problems connecting wirelessly, make sure both the headset and your computer are on the same Wi-Fi network. Firewall settings can also sometimes block the airlink. It is the same process if you want to use the link cable. Just make sure the USB cable is connected and that the airlink is toggled off in your headset when you go to pair. So if you pair other devices, it's the same process, but select the appropriate headset and connection method. The next piece of software you need is Steam VR. So to access this, you will need a Steam account and download the Steam desktop app from their website and log in. But within the Steam app, you can search for the Steam VR in the store. It is free and just click to install. When you want to run your VR projects, you will need to have your headset turned on, of course, and paired with the PC, and have the Oculus app active. Then you turn on the VR Steam, and it should show all your devices here in green. So always remember to have these three things. Now we are ready for the Unreal setup. I will be using Unreal 5.3 and starting with the VR template under games, which is a great out-of-the-box start. So just create a name menu project using this. If all your software and headset is activated and connected, you will be able to see the VR preview of this drop-down. Click this and put your headset on, and you will be able to straightaway move around in VR. So the standard controls work with having the right trigger to teleport and the left bump stick to rotate around. So this typical starter scene lets you get an understanding of the maps and controls. 
you also have standard grip controls and a basic UI menu, which is easy to customize later on. In relation to game settings and optimization, a lot is dependent on your app, but I will mention that a good starting place is to just reduce the engine's scalability by going to settings in the top right, engine scalability settings, and then change it either to medium or low while testing. With this basic setup, let's test it on an urban scene. We can go back to the marketplace. There are quite a few nice free architectural scenes you can use. For this example, I'll use the AccuCities London scan. And select free, which is always nice, and then add to our project. Once it is downloaded, go back to Unreal Engine and in the content browser, find AccuCities, Maps, and open the Union Textured model. Everything is black, but if you go to Unlit mode here, you can see that there is geometry, there are just no lights in this map. The quickest way to get some lighting into our scene is to go to Window, Environmental Light Mixer, and you can click these buttons to add all the lighting and effects. This can be used in combination with the post process volume, which you can find in the outliner here. So just search for exposure and increase the exposure here. I've done a previous tutorial in detail how to use the light mixer, so I won't go through it here, but I'll just adjust the skylight intensity as the shadows are very dark here and then just change the fog slightly. And I'll leave it at that and then get into the VR. The most important setting to change is under the world settings. So if you go here to game mode, and it needs to be changed to VR game mode. This activates the VR pawn and all the VR controls. If you don't see the world settings, just go to window and you can activate world settings from there. Next, let's find a position to walk along. So maybe on the bridge over here, over the middle of the tents. And to make the VR teleportation work, along the geometry that we've imported, we need to add a nav mesh bounds volume. You can find this by going to the green plus icon, volumes, and then you find the nav mesh bounds volume. If you go to the details panel, you can use the transforms to adjust the scale so that it can cover the area you want to walk along. So I'll just adjust it to cover the bridge area. If you hit the letter P on your keyboard, it will turn green to show which areas are active and you can teleport along. So you can keep adjusting until you have the selected area you want and then you can just hit P to turn it off again. Finally, just add a player start. You can do this by going to the green plus icon and the basic player start. This just needs to be positioned down on the ground. So I'll move it down onto the road in front of the building. Something like it. Now, if I put on my headset and hit the BR start, I can use the pump stick to rotate around and to teleport as well. And this will work all along the balance volume which I added. Just to show you, you can also do this for rooftop areas, for example. So if I take the player start and bring it up, just adjust it to a flat area, hit play, and you can see it works the same. I've just used a low mesh 3D scan of London for the demo, but you can do this for any level of project in much greater detail using the same techniques gone through here for the basic setup. I will go through in the next video how you can use your BI headsets using Google for realistic tiles so you can stream in all this context and you don't need to load in any physical maps or geometries. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there.